Yeah, so the final movie for today's show is My Boyfriend's Back from 1993, in which a senior high school student named Johnny Dingle, nice name by the way, uh, he's forever been in love with Missy McLeod, but when he sums up the courage to tell her about his feelings, he ends up getting killed. And then he rises from the grave as the undead, and is determined to take the love of his life to the prom. So this is a movie, I actually watched this uh, only a couple of weeks ago, and I did watch it again last night just to, once again, refresh the memory, and restore the spank bank. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy Lynn. Maybe before I talk about it, maybe you should tell everyone all the good things that are in this movie. Well, so I think uh, this is an, um, this is obviously a movie that I um, I am not inclined to enjoy. Uh, so I guess I need to give a little background on this. Pretty much the only reason, so the way we that we do this show is, you know, we each give each other a list of movies and we choose movies and. The only reason I chose this movie was because I am to be called a whore. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, um, this was, you know, very loud and whore. I mean, it's like a little zombie action, but that's not enough. There's elements, but it's, yeah, it's, it's for the most part a teen comedy. Really. Yeah, so, and, you know, I'm not necessarily against teen comedy. It's like American Pie, best movie ever made. But, um, <laughs> this was a, um, I mean, it's and it's not just comedy. It's like really goofy comedy. It's oddball, um, yeah. Yeah, and that's not my type of comedy. Um, so this had so many things going against it. As we've seen with like uh, the Greasy Strangler and <laughs> Triloquist, all that, all those really oddball type horror movies. As- aside from House comedy, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, th- this movie had a lot of things going against it. Um, I thought there were some funny lines and uh, like Chucky saw Tracy Lind, uh, who was also in Fright Night Part Two. And a couple of other movies like Class of 1999 and such. Uh, you know, she is um, a nice piece of eye candy. Um, <laughs> I mean, I would come back from the dad for her, but it's th- th- yeah. this um, th- this type of comedy is just not not my thing. So I mean, I try. I'm you know, I I guess it's be, you know, going into this movie, I knew that. So I'm I'm trying not to be too uncontrolled. You know, it's I'm not the demographic for this movie, so. The fact that I hated it showed it be like a big shock. Like as soon as it's, as soon as it's out of post, I'm like, oh god. Um, so yeah, not my cup of tea. But you know, that's just me. I, I'm jiggy. I have no fun in life. So. Mm. Well, speaking of the horror side of things, um, there is some Friday the Thirteenth connections here. So obviously, it's a movie that's produced by Sean Cunningham, and uh, I noticed. Harry Manfredini did the music on this one, so... Yeah, it's amazing. I, I saw those names, and like, what the hell are they doing? Yeah, and I assume maybe there's other people involved in Friday the 13th movies who actually got brought on to help with this movie. Um, but those are the two main names that I noticed. So, you know, there's that aspect to it, I guess. Maybe, you know, they wanted to branch out and thought, hey, we got we there's money in these types of movies, I guess. I think this movie is also a bit of a product of its time. Like, I, I don't feel like it's a movie where it's going to get a lot of new fans. Like, you you know how, like, 80s slashes, like, it doesn't matter how old you are, whether you're 40 years old or 20 years old. Um, you know, if you, if you watch some 80s slashes, you enjoy them, you're going to go out and look for more 80s slashes, aren't you? But... Um, these types of movies, they're so few and far between. I, I, I don't think, um, I, I don't think there's that same love for this genre, I guess, as you would for something like 80 Slash or so. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like if, if it's a movie you watched back in the 90s, you know, back when it came out, you, you, you get maybe like a nostalgic vibe from it that helps you to continue to enjoy it. Um, I mean, it, it, maybe there's a relatability aspect to this as well. I mean, for me, it did remind me of a few things from high school. Like, uh, well, for instance, my prom sucked, but uh, <laughs> I might as well have been a zombie at my prom. But, um, it, you know, it kind of reminded me of my quest to ask 
someone to go with me because you know w when i was in high school there was like a, a girl um w I, I don't know for you but i assume for a lot of <laughs> a lot of people you know there might be that person that you come across in high school that you start thinking about quite a lot and you know i i've someone you really getting into and uh you know for so many days or maybe weeks i was thinking mm -hmm, you know i really want to ask her to go and i kept putting it off and the day that i finally gained the courage to say okay i'm gonna go find her i'm gonna go ask her and so i i go around start you know asking some people where i can find her because i hadn't seen her that day and that day, not like the day before she was at school, but that day, for some reason, she had quit school. <laughs> so, so that's a kick in the face. Yeah, such a kick in the pants. That day that I get the courage to go find her and ask her, that very day she, she's she's gone. And now, the the even worse thing is she actually still ends up going somehow. I don't know, but. <laughs> She went with someone else who... I, I don't even think the guy went to our school. I didn't recognize him, so... Um, another kick in the pants is that one of my friends talked to her, like, later, like, the next year or something. Like, he ran into her while she was working at some store. And he me he mentioned to her, you know, that I was going to ask her and stuff. And, and she said, oh, yeah, she would have went with me. So I'd be... <laughs> <laughs> oh... It's just, uh... It makes you wish you were a zombie. But uh, another aspect to it is I actually had to have some surgery, bef like, literally less than a week before the prom, so I, I, I could barely move, to be honest, when I went. And they messed up the seating and everything. I was meant to be sitting with my friends, and they had me sitting with all these other people I didn't like. It was just a disaster of a night, and the events leading up to it, so... Well... If it makes you feel any better, I was so out of it at that point in time, I did not even consider going to my prom. So, <laughs> like, well. it's like a complete non-entity. I actually, I, I, I went to the um, post-prom. We had like a post-prom party. And I, I, I was there for like 15 minutes. I'm like, no, I'm done. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, my experience at prom. Mm. So now that we've so thoroughly depressed people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, but anyways, my point was, you know, I could find things in this movie that I could relate to, and I, I think that helped. And also, in my older age, I'm starting to see, you, you know, how like when you're younger, you're very set in what you like. Like, for, for instance, music. Like, when I was a teenager, if you asked me to listen to some Phil Collins, I would have said no. You. Gay word. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> listening to that shit. Now I'll, I'll definitely listen to it. I would, um, you know, be very much stuck on. I only listen to heavy metal. That's what I'm into. And now it's like everything. Like I, I and it's it, it's same with movies. Like I can actually sit down and watch like a, a drama with a love story in it, whereas twenty years ago I probably couldn't. And that's another aspect to this, you know, because there is that love story aspect to this which some horror fans you know they're just going to see it as you know it, it's just not something that really interests them but hey you know to each their own i guess i i guess one thing i was saying is movies to fans um was i did like it had sort of a like, um a comic book type setup um like you know showing comic book panels hey you know this is the story of what happened i think it helped with its um sort of slapstick, um, light-hearted feel. So I, I appreciated they went with that type of artistic vibe. Hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I liked uh, some of those uh, random insults that guy was throwing out to Tracy Lynn, calling her zombie slut and horror of the undead. <laughs> oh, and actually, now that you mention it, um, this is one of the things that I'm bringing up only because... I, it's something that hey, it should probably be brought up. Um, but this is a um, somewhat early movie of uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, um, which it's not really been an actor. I was um, I, I've not seen that many things with him in it. But you know, 
he, he said has a pretty recognizable face and he pops up a bit in this movie and so hey if you are like a Philip Seymour Hoffman guy I'm like you are to see our movies you should check this one out there is a scene I think it was a um it was like a, a dream I guess that Johnny was having of Tracy Lind where she's like don't you want to eat me and he's like well like, I, th I think we know what he's thinking of when she says that or at least what I was thinking of when she said that. So it's just a bit of a shame that she had a hair and pigtails, which is not necessarily a look I go for, but uh, there you go. One other thing, um, I did notice Matthew McConaughey was in this one, <laughs> at least just as an extra. Oh, no, not as an extra, he just had like one line in the movie when they're in the theatres. I didn't recognise him the first time I watched it, uh, or maybe I thought it could have been him but I just didn't go look but when I watched it last night I, I was like damn that, that really does sound like him so I'm gonna go check it out and it was him and you know he eventually I think the next movie he did after this was uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre next generation movie so anyways you know that's a big name that managed to have a very small appearance in this one actually something else I don't know if it's something that they just used to do back in like the 80s and 90s and um movies would have like a, ma a main song in the movie like this one's got the song hanging on for dear life it it it's kind of like played in its mostly in its entirety towards the end at the prom but throughout the movie you can kind of hear little instrumental versions of that song going on throughout like they, they don't go on for very long it's just like 10 seconds here 20 seconds there um but i noticed that's something a lot of like some of the older movies used to do uh used to do and i don't i can't recall newer movies still doing that and i don't know there's something to it that i enjoy yeah and i i also what you mentioned since you brought up that prom scene i also did think um, despite the whole movie being cheesy and, you know, like, slapstick comedy, like, body parts falling off, like, God. You know, and actually, the biggest thing that annoyed me is, you know, he came back from the dad and people were like, oh, hey, how are you doing? Um, like, it just, it happens every now and again, I guess. So that type of casual, oh, hey, he's dad, so that's, well, that's fine, we're cool with it. Yeah, I, I could have done without that. But I did think the Andy and Pram scene, when, like, he's pretty much, or I guess finally actually dying while they're dancing. I thought it had a somewhat of an emotional impact. Um, and then they ruin it by the stupid having, or I guess it's a purgatory or limbo type thing. Uh, it's sort of, I don't know, it, it was ambitious of them, so I guess well done. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I just could have done without that conclusion. But at the same time, it's like, I can't imagine a way they would have ended this I would have been okay with. Yeah. Okay, so my boyfriend's back. Uh, you know, I, I had a decent time with this, like I said, just because there's a few different aspects of it. Like, uh, I can relate to some of the things going on in the movie back from when I was in high school. But also a big thing, I think, is Tracy Lind herself. I mean, oh, jeez. Um, she might be my favorite uh, actress. It's a shame she hasn't been in movies for so long doesn't seem like she wants to do acting so mm. but this movie it um like the first time I watched it it was just so like I didn't expect it to be such a an oddball type movie like uh like I said when when he comes back from the dead they're just like oh hey how are you or whatever and I was expecting them to, to be like wait what the fuck is going on like and, you know, he tries to take a bite out of someone and they're like, oh, that was, that was unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just, and then eventually, I think, I think the second time around, because I was, ex like, I knew what to expect, what type of movie it was, it, it became a little easier to accept scenes like that. So in any case, I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10, and please marry me, Tracy. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll just I'll just I'll just simply say that this really isn't my type of movie. It's like if I watched Teen Wolf or something. You know, I actually might like that one because um some of the actors involved, but it's just like a horror light that 
is like way more comedic than it is horror and just not my type of thing. So I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 10. You know, it's amazing because a lot of times this would, be, this would be like the worst movie of the show for me, but then we had Wolf Ward. So, I mean, that went out the window. So, but I mean, 4 yeah. out of you know, four out of 10. Um, it's, you know, if you like your type of thing, it's fine. It's your type of thing. It's just not for me. So, seems like a fair rating. So Tracy's not worth six stars? Well, she um, is like worth three of the four I gave it. So, I mean, <laughs> that's not bad. Like one actress bumping it up by three points. Hmm. Not many actresses could do that. Yeah.